and welcome to Access USI. I'm Ann Powell. And I'm Rachel Lohorn. While it looked as if President Trump wanted to distance himself from his new acting attorney general, today there's a new strategy. Two senior administration officers tell CNN the president is now digging in on his appointment of Matt Whitaker. The man now is in charge of Bob Mueller's rush investigation, CNN Lord Jarrett reports. After a rocky start, the administration gearing up Tuesday for its first legal challenge on the controversial appointment of Matt Whitaker as the acting attorney general. The state of Maryland arguing in court papers that President Trump bypassed the Constitution when he named Whitaker to replace Jeff Sessions, writing that Trump is, quote, attempting to fill a vacancy he created himself with a temporary appointment that might last for many months or years. Concerns echoed for days by Democrats on Capitol Hill. I think Matthew Whitaker's appointment was unconstitutional, illegal, and just plain wrong. It's unconstitutional because he has not been subjected to the confirmation process. As part of a lawsuit over the future of Obamacare, a federal judge may now decide that Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein is Sessions' rightful successor if Maryland prevails. At the same time, the Office of Legal Counsel at DOJ preparing soon to issue a legal opinion defending Whitaker's appointment under federal law. No matter what the Trump Justice Department says, there is no acceptable justification for this appointment. The chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Republican Senator Chuck Grassley, who, like Whitaker, is from Iowa, tried to dismiss his colleagues' concerns about Whitaker shutting down the special counsel's Russia investigation. Doesn't matter what Whitaker thinks. Uh, the president said it isn't going to be done. While also signaling clear disagreement with Whitaker's views on a famous Supreme Court case many people view as the cornerstone of the judiciary's branch's powers. If you'd like to have a fellow Iowan tell another Iowan, which Mr. Whitaker is, and I know him well, that he ought to forget that. I'm not a lawyer, but Marbury versus Madison is the basis of uh, our uh, uh, the judicial branch check in the other two branches of the government as far as I'm concerned. The Southern Indiana Reading Series welcomed a new author this week. Access USI reporter Jana Garrett has the story. James Hahn Matson, author of the book The Lost Prayers of Ricky Graves, came to the Southern Indiana Reading Series event to read excerpts out of his book to an eager crowd. The crowd was ready with questions for the award-winning author, and Matson happily responded to each audience member's questions. At the end of the event, Matson's books were on sale, and people had the opportunity to get Matson's signature in the book they had just purchased. The Southern Indiana Reading Series event is a monthly event where authors come to discuss the books that they have written. The events exist to embrace literary art and are organized by Casey Pitcher, an assistant professor in the USI English Department. For Access USI, I'm Jana Garrett. USI ROTC has commissioned many officers who have gone on to serve in the active Army, Army Reserve, and National Guard. Many of these officers deployed in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. The USI ROTC program mirrors the cadet motto of scholar, athlete, leader. This means that the top priority for cadets enrolled in USI ROTC is a focus on their grades. USI ROTC graduates an outstanding 99% of cadets who receive scholarship contracts. If you're interested in learning more, go to USI's website and search ROTC. Hi everybody, I'm Cameron Ellis with a look at your Access USI weather forecast and we're talking about the potential for some snow, maybe even some ice across the tri-state as we go through the overnight and that is coming true as we do have some winter weather alerts to talk about and here they are, winter weather advisory going into effect here this afternoon. That continues into 6 o'clock in the evening on Thursday and as we take a look further out to our west in the Illinois area, winter storm warning in effect at 6 o'clock tonight. That goes till 6 o'clock on your Thursday. They're going to be seeing more of the snow side of things. We're looking at more of a freezing rain or ice event at this point, but definitely can't rot some snow potential within that. And here's the breakdown on the snow accumulations based off our three uh, model projections that we use in order to forecast the weather. That is in the GFS model currently showing an inch and a half of snow possible. The North American model taking it at a little more aggressive pace at two inches of snow. And our HRR, which is a shorter range model, it's currently taking it even less at one inch 
of snow possible. And these are just the potentials. We'll get to the more bottom of the line here in just a moment of what we're actually going to be seeing. And otherwise, our ice accumulation potential seeing up to 0.15 inches on the GFS model. And once again, the North American model being pretty aggressive with this one at 0.31 inches of ice possible. I think, honestly, it's going to be tough to get to that. But yet at the same time, Definitely can't be ruled out. We'll just kind of have to see what happens. But uh, that one, I think, is taking it a little bit too far. I think the more reasonable ones kind of go between the GFS and the HRRR model. HRRR model uh, is currently showing at 0 0.19 inches of ice possible. So anyways, the bottom of the line uh, with this accumulation total for the snow, that is, is only 1 to 2 inches for the Evansville area and through that outline blue shaded area. And then taking a look further out to the west, Illinois is going to be in the zone for quite a bit of snow, two to four inches of snow for that area. That's where that winter storm warning is. And then further out to our south and east, looking at an inch or less of snow. And then as far as ice is concerned, looking at uh, anywhere from a tenth of an inch to 0 0.20 inches of snow within ice accumulations. And then obviously out in the Illinois area, because they're going to be seeing more snow than they are uh, the freezing rain, that is, they're not going to be seeing much ice on that, maybe a tenth of an inch or less within that. Otherwise, we're expecting the rain and snow mix tonight, 90% chance, 31 degrees for an overnight low. If you're headed out in the door in the morning, make sure you use caution, give yourself a little extra time. And, well, if you don't need to be out, then honestly, it's probably recommended uh, that you stay uh, off the roadways if possible because it might even be slick in the morning with that freezing rain coming through, especially uh, if we get as much as it's saying we're going to be getting based off those models I also showed you earlier. 50% chance of rain and snow also continuing into our morning commute at 7 a.m. 32 degrees for the high at that point by lunchtime at noon, 70% chance of rain and snow. So it's going to be continuing well into the middle of the day, 35 degrees by then. And then by 5 o'clock in the evening, it's going to be finally tapering off and 20% chance by then, 33 degrees. Going to be cooling back down as we go into the overnight and we're uh, on Thursday. And we're expecting overall, though, for your Thursday, a rain and snow makes 90% chance, 34 degrees for a daytime high then. And we're expecting that winter weather to finally make its way out of our area. And it's going to be becoming more like fall as we go towards the weekend and end of the week there. 45 by Friday, 51 on Saturday. And then we have another rain chance possible as we go into the day on Sunday with our next cold front coming in. But it's not going to be bringing as much of a crazy weather event as what we're seeing tonight. That is, it's only going to be bringing us a small rain chance, cooling us down slightly to 45 degrees by Monday. And then we'll be drying back out as we go towards Monday and Tuesday and maybe even warming up to the lower 50s by then. We're back with more news and sports after the break. Train your body. But also train your mind. Academic skills, training your mind to succeed. The 15th ranked and second seeded USI men's soccer team could not get by third seeded and 22nd ranked Saginaw Valley State University in 4-1 loss in the second round of the NCAA Division II Midwest Regional Saturday afternoon at Strasswick Field. The Screaming Eagles end their season with a 13-4 and 1 overall record. Their first GLVC regular season crowned in since 1990 the highest regional ranking since 1982, and their third appearance in the NCAA Division II tournament. USI sophomore forward Maggie Winter was named Google Cloud Division II Women's Soccer Academic All-District 4 by the College Sports Information Directors of America. The Academic All-District 4 honor is the first of Winter's career at USI. Winter is the third USI women's soccer player to earn the award. 
USIS women's basketball defeated Saginaw Valley State University 67-58 for their first win of the season Sunday afternoon. USI men's basketball opens the 2018-19 home schedule this Saturday when it hosts Martin Methodist College in the pack. Tip-off is set for 3 p.m. The midterms are over and the results are in. Many students from different political backgrounds voted, but what topics did they think were the most important from the election? Reporter Travis Onyet has the details. Last Thursday, there was a discussion about the results of the midterms that happened on Tuesday, November 6th. There were four representatives from four parties, the Green Party, the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, and the Libertarian Party. They discussed a variety of issues, including immigration reform and health care. Each party that the students represented had very different ideals of how America should run. However, many of the topics that were discussed throughout the debate seemed to have the same themes echoed across all parties. In terms of how things would be done, there were differences in the party's solutions and where the money should come from. But if there is one idea that every student should agree on, it's the importance of voting. It's a civic duty. We live in a democratic republic, so it's kind of important to me to vote, because if nobody votes, then what's the point of having a government? Reporting for Access USI, I'm Travis Onyet. It's the most wonderful time of the year, and you can celebrate with USI on Monday evening at Lighting a Tradition. Hosted by the Student Alumni Association, you can, you can enjoy some Christmas lights on the quad, caroling, holiday treats, carriage rides, and more. The festivities kick off on Monday evening at 6 outside of the David L. Rice Library. Keep an eye out for a rave alert that you can sign up through text, call, or email in case the university closes due to inclement weather. And that is all for this episode of Access USI. Tune in November 28th because this following week is going to be the great holiday season. Have a good night.